Hi everyone, welcome back to my page. This week I wanted to discuss social anxiety and public speaking. This is something that's been coming up for years with me because I've been public speaking and I've been in front of the camera for a very long time. So that gives people the impression that I know what I'm doing and that I'm super confident. But let me share this with you guys. I too get extremely nervous you know, the cold sweats, the sweaty palms, the dry mouth, all of that comes in when I have to do an interview or public speaking. But for those who suffer with social anxiety anyway, when the spotlight is literally on you because you are fearful of being judged or being in the spotlight, so when you have to go and speak out, be it digitally or in person, do a presentation or do something to a group of people, then the thought of that could be literally crippling you. So I wanted to discuss some tips that work for me and things that help me focus and really wrap my head around having to speak in front of a group of people. If you haven't been to my page, welcome. I'm Hamasa. I look at mental and emotional well-being as well as personal development and just day-to-day -day issues. Do subscribe to my page so that you're up to date with all my content. Now I went into explaining what social anxiety was in my previous last week's video. Um, and I will just summarize it for you guys so that you have a better idea. But this week I wanted to concentrate on what it's like to be speaking in front of a group of people. I feel like nowadays, whether it's on Zoom or in person, it's still you still feel just as much pressure when it comes to having to present. And obviously with our jobs and with the things that we do, a lot of us are put in this position and really not given the skills to learn how to cope with such situation. So social anxiety is a little bit different from anxiety. Anxiety we know is just overthinking and just ruminating thoughts that may or may not ever happen and either living in the past or the future and not really in your present moment. Just stressing about situation over and over again in your head. And when you do that, you create physiological signs in your body where you get a sick feeling in your stomach, you get shaky hands, you, you get like heart, um, fast heartbeat um, and it's really um, sweats and it's really, really like your body is full of adrenaline and you're in fight or flight mode. Social anxiety is that that's now triggered at the thought of being in front of other people, whether it's a party or a presentation or a job interview or anywhere in public, when there's other people around, it could even be friends and family, <clears throat> you feel extremely, extremely nervous and anxious and you just want the ground to swallow you up. That's why when it comes to public speaking and you are literally the focus, then that thought of that is just insane to people who suffer from social anxiety. So that comes across in your posture and how you carry yourself as well. So you're already making yourself small in the room. And that's what we want to avoid. So there are a few things that you can do. Of course, preparing and knowing your topic and what you want to discuss is extremely important. You need to be knowledgeable and know your stuff when you're speaking. Because the minute you're hesitant or that you're stuttering or you can't find the right words, then you will lose your own focus. It's not about other people, it's about how you would punish yourself and self-sabotage. So it's important to know your stuff. That goes without saying, if you're speaking on a topic, I'm hoping that by that point, you do know your stuff. But also, the one thing that I'd say to you guys is to do your research beforehand. So if you know that you're presenting to a group of people, if it's on Zoom, then you know who's joining your Zoom. Try and speak to them and find out some information. So ask, see what your audience want to see. And if it's a present live presentation in front of a group of people or like a seminar or something, then walk, when you're there beforehand and before you're about to present, walk around the room, find a few people that you feel comfortable with and share your thoughts and ask them questions and see what they're expecting from what you've got to say or anyone else that's speaking. This way you're already prepared of what your audience are expecting and what you, they want to hear. This also helps with my next point, which after you know what you're talking about, you've tested the water with your audience, 
the way, like I said, your posture and how you carry yourself is extremely important because you're setting the tone of the value that you bring into the room. Now, if there's someone that you're intimidated by or you're nervous and you're walking around like this with your head down and you're looking away and you're making yourself small so that you're not taking space in the room, then people notice that and people won't listen to you because you don't have a presence. So be conscious of how you come across, you know, shoulders back, head up high, make eye contact, make sure that you look. Because if you find someone threatening and you consider them a threat, by covering away and looking away, you are not gathering information or you are not protecting yourself. You are running away from it and that's not going to help you. So if you do consider people a threat or you do find it difficult to look people in the eye or like look up, you have to face that. You have to make eye contact and build a report with your audience. Like I said, the people that you've picked to speak about, let's say three to five people, they might be able to help you in the audience. So if you look up and your your eyes are scanning the room and you're going from left to right and you can't focus, because you've already had a conversation with these people that you've selected, find them in the audience and catch their eyes, speak to them. You are enticing your audience in. They are paying attention to you. So like I said, you've got your shoulders back, you've got your head up high and you're holding your eye contact with people and you are focused and they're focused on you. So that's extremely important because when we are so nervous, when it comes about, when it comes time to speaking out in public, we are internalizing our focus. I don't want to cough. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to stutter. I feel like this. I feel like that. And we're we're just putting more and more pressure on ourselves. So take that focus out and look and focus at other people. The next thing I'd say is that, see for me it was the opposite because I was media trained when I was Miss England because I had to be on the spot on different TV channels for different countries. I had to speak in Farsi and Russian and English and you know, it was, it was a lot and overwhelming and I was only 18, so I had to have a little bit of media training. And what I found hard when it came to making these videos for you guys was that because of my media training, I actually came across very scripted. So the first few videos that I posted on my Instagram and also IGTV and um, YouTube, they come across a little bit robotic and a little bit stiff. And it's not because it was rehearsed, or that I'm very robotic, <laughs> maybe, well, I was robotic, but it wasn't because I was very um, rehearsed. It was just because I was trained in media and to speak on camera, so I couldn't help but to come across very prim and proper and just like, like a bit of like a newsreader. But that doesn't work for YouTube and it doesn't work for social media and it doesn't come across personable. Um, and it took me some time to break out of that shell and be able to have a conversation as I am now with you guys. Now I feel comfortable, I know my audience, I could speak to you guys. But before, it was my nerves and they were making me very stiff and it's like very, very serious and just not... It didn't seem like I was talking from my own experiences and um, personal, you know, thoughts. It was just robotic. So that's where my problem was. Um, so it's important for us to know your audience and to know who you're talking to and how to speak to them. Posture is also very, very important. Eye contact, how you carry yourself, you're setting the tone and you're showing people your worth and value. The next thing would be is that we always seem to think, I was, through my research, I saw this video where it said that they've done a research in Cornell University and made certain students feel embarrassed to see how they felt about being embarrassed in front of a lecture full of people. And students that were embarrassed thought that 50% of the people vividly remembered their embarrassing moment when they walked into the room late dressed in a funny t-shirt. But after the research, after they did their, um, find, their findings showed that only 10% of people actually remembered what was going on. So as much as we think that, and that's called the spotlight syndrome or the spotlight effect, we think that we're the main character. We're the star of every show and we're the main focus and everybody cares and everybody wants to know and everybody remembers whether we do good or bad. But the thing is, people really don't care. Most people are very, very consumed in their own heads and in their own insecurities, issues, problems, life. Like life is hard and we all are going through something. So as much as we might think that people really care about what we're saying, what we're doing, they actually don't. 
And whatever they do, remember, if you do start a, remember your audience don't know what you're supposed to say. Only you know what you're supposed to say. So even if you do make a mistake, even if you do mess up somewhere, you can always deter, like, you know, save yourself and you could always cover it up. And you could, you know, just because something you know you've done wrong, don't let that panic take over and show in your body language and show that, oh, I've made a mistake, everybody knows. They don't know. So if you do make a mistake, you carry on and you just converse and you just bring the, converse, like, you bring the topic back to what you're supposed to talk about. Your audience are none the wiser. So it's only you and in your head and they don't really care that much. And once your presentation's over, 10 minutes into it, People have already probably forgotten. And then that might not be the nicest thing to hear, but it takes a huge weight off your shoulders when you realize that people really don't care that much as much as you care about your presentation. So when you have that in your head and you're standing in a room full of people or you're looking at a screen full of Zoom windows, remember, they really are in their own heads most of the time. So in order for your message to be concise, coherent, um, you want to be make an effect on your audience, you want to get the best possible outcome and result out of your speech, just make sure that your focus is outwards, you hold, your, you hold yourself in a confident position, only you know you're making the mistakes if you're making those mistakes, nobody else knows, you've got this, and the worst that can happen, only 10% of people will really remember. So don't let that eat you up, don't kill yourself beforehand, know that you own the room, it's your moment, and make eye contact, speak to people, um, don't be all over the place and disheveled. And even if you make mistakes, like people are not that mean. Um, they can see you're trying, and if you stutter a little bit and you're holding eye contact with someone, they'll smile back at you and it'll bring you straight back in the room and you'll get back on it. What's the worst that can happen? I hope you guys found this helpful. Like I said, I also struggled before and I still do before I have an interview or a live TV appearance or a presentation. I still get nervous and I still get sick, but at the end of the day, um, I have to face it and I'm not gonna focus on myself so much. I'm just gonna hope for the best and I'm gonna trust myself that I've got this only I am self-sabotaging. No one else cares about me as much as I think they do. So it's all up in my head. So I hope you did find this helpful. If you have, please do share it with your friends, family, and whoever may need it. Please subscribe to my page, like and comment on this video, and I'll see you guys again here next week. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.